Hare Krishna everybody, welcome back again to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books here at the live studios in the olive tree cottage of Hode Farm in between Folkestone and Canterbury in Kent, Southeast England. Uh, it's been quite a ride. I just heard from Divide, who, whose Facebook account is recording and giving us the facility so that I don't have to have a Facebook account. Hare Krishna, one of those rare liberated souls that don't have a <laughs> Facebook account. I, maybe that's one of the reasons I've kept my sanity. <coughs> and uh, it was brought to my attention by him that we started to do this daily readings live stream. I mean, I've been doing this for now going on six years every, every day, reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Shamagori, Haribol, Haribol. I'd like you to meet Shamagori, the best cook in the world. And believe me, you'll get no second opinion from anybody who ever has eaten what she's cooked. Hare Krishna. And besides that, she's a great ascetic. <laughs> she does it, come rain or shine, toothache or whatever happened to the body, she does it every day, no matter what. Hare Krishna. So, could you sit in, in this chair, please? Thank you. Are, are you okay? Can I get you anything? Sure? I mean, you're always serving everyone else. If I can just render some service, I'd be happy. Water? Anything? <laughs> cool. <All right. clears throat> so then Davide noticed that, you know, we're getting close to this reading the whole Srimad Bhagavatam with comments and reflections of all the devotees who've listened this last year and a half on Facebook, recorded for posterity. I mean, that's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. I believe it's the only one of its kind. Yeah, it's a huge deal. I know, you should continue. Don't let me interrupt. Okay. <clears throat> so, here we are. Hode Farm, the Olive Tree College. It's actually cottage, but we call it college because there's so much high education going on here. High level education. All right? So we have a, a, a room full of Vaishnavas from all walks of life, from all places. I, I can't introduce you to them all, but uh, we'll pan when we get around to the point of having our, our uh, open mic session. We'll pan the camera around so everyone will get to see you all and you can wave. And We're up to 1,776 followers. That's substantial, considering the, the subject matter and what the world's going through right now. It's definitely substantial. We're trying to revive the reading of Srila Prabhupada's books, the hearing of Prabhupada's books directly as much as I can while I'm still alive. Well, I never die, but while I'm here in this body, on the earth, this time around. Okay. We'll start by uh, chanting the prayer of Sanatana Goswami, the senior disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was instructed by him personally longer than any other person on the earth. And he received the full mercy of Lord Chaitanya and was empowered to write books and elaborate on Lord Chaitanya's teachings uh, to the world, along with his brother Rupa Goswami and the other uh, Goswamis of Vrindavan. So one of the things he wrote was called the Sri Krishna Lila Stava, a very short book and written in vocative Sanskrit, which is very simple, because San Sanskrit can be very complicated. 
when you read the verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam and other transcendental literatures in Sanskrit, you'll see it's very poetic and very complex and very beautiful. But this is written in vocative Sanskrit. It's very, very simple. And his, his idea was to offer 108 obeisances to the Vrindavan pastimes of Krishna, Rajalila. And this, what we're re going to, about ready to recite, is the 107th obeisance out of 108 obeisances of this book. He saved it to the end because the Srimad Bhagavatam, which this prayer glorifies, is the source for us to receive the pastimes of Krishna in Vrindavan. Therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam is called Sumam Bonam of all of the Vedic literatures, the ripened fruits of all the Vedic literatures. 335 chapters, 12 cantos. And out of those 335 chapters, 90 chapters are dedicated to Krishna Leela. That's a big percentage of that this book, which which is clear evidence that Krishna is the source of all the other incarnations, which is also stated explicitly in the text itself. That the form of Krishna is the original form, uh, the source of all other forms, of all other worlds, of all other incarnations, uh, of everything. Uh, therefore, Sanatana Goswami wrote this, Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram, the glories of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it goes like this <clears throat> Sarva Shastabdi Piyusha, Sarva Vedaika Sattvala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadya, Sarva Lokaika Drik Prida. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths. You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dvandotita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshak Shadayate, Sarvada Sarvasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostute, to me. I bow down to you, who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka bando mat sangin, mat guru man mahadana, man nistadaga mat bhagya, mat ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu saduta dayin, atini chuchata kara, hanamunchagada chin mam, premna rit kantayos pura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen. Please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 so we've reached the third, the tenth canto, thirteenth chapter, one of my favorite chapters actually, 
the stealing of the boys and calves by Brahma. Text 1. Srila Shukradeva Goswami said, O best of devotees, most fortunate Parikshit, you have inquired very nicely, for although constantly hearing the pastimes of the Lord, you are perceiving his activities to be newer and newer. Purport. Unless one is very advanced in Krishna consciousness, one cannot stick to hearing the pastimes of the Lord constantly. Nityam navino navaya manam. Even though advanced devotees hear continually about the Lord for years, they still feel that these topics are coming to them as newer and fresher. Therefore, such devotees cannot give up hearing of the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Premanjana, chudita bhakti vilochanena, santak sadaiva vidyeshu vilokayanti. The word santa <clears throat> is used to refer to persons who have developed love for Krishna. Yam shamasundaram. Achintya gunasurupam govinda maripurusham tamaham vajami Brahma Sangita 538 Prikshit Maharaj therefore is addressed as Bhagavatotama the best of devotees because unless one is very much elevated in devotional service one cannot feel ecstasy from hearing more and more and appreciate the topics as ever fresher and newer. Text 2 <clears throat> Paramahansas, devotees who have accepted the essence of life, are attached to Krishna in the core of their hearts. And he is the aim of their lives. It is their nature to talk only of Krishna at every moment, as if such topics were newer and newer. <clears throat> they are attached to such topics, just as materialists are attached to topics of women and sex. Purport. The word Sarabritam means Paramahansas. The hangsa, or swan, accepts milk from a mixture of water, milk and water, and rejects the water. Did you know that? A, a swan can put the beak in a water, a glass of water, mixed with milk and water, and take out the milk and leave the water. Yeah. <clears throat> Similarly, the nature of persons who have taken to spiritual life and Krishna consciousness, understanding Krishna to be the life and soul of everyone, is that they cannot give up Krishna Kata or topics about Krishna at any moment. Such Paramahansas always see Krishna within the core of the heart. Santaksadaiva Ridi Yeshu Vilokayanti Kama desires Kroda anger Bhaya fear are always present in the material world. But in the spiritual or transcendental world, one can use them for Krishna. Kamam Krishna Karma Arpane. The desire of the Paramahansas, therefore, is to act always for Krishna. Krodha Bhakti Dveshi Jane. They use anger against non-devotees tra and transform vaya or fear 
into fear of being deviated from Krishna consciousness. In this way, the life of a Paramahansa devotee is used entirely for Krishna. Just as the life of a person attached to the material world is used simply for women and money. What is day for the materialistic person is night for the spiritualist. What is very sweet for the materialist, namely money, is regarded as poison by the spiritualist. Sindarshanam bishayinam atayoshitam cha ha hanta hanta bishabakshanato pyasadu. This is the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For the Paramahansa, Krishna is everything. But for the materialist, money is everything. Text 3. <clears throat> o King, <clears throat> kindly hear me with great attention. Although the activities of the Supreme Lord are very confidential, no ordinary man being able to understand them, I shall speak to you about them. I shall speak about them to you. For spiritual masters explain to a submissive disciple even subject matters that are very confidential and difficult to understand. Text 4. Then, after saving the boys and calves from the mouth of Agasura, who was death personified, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, brought them all to the bank of the river and spoke the following words. 5. My dear friends, just see how this riverbank is extremely beautiful because of its pleasing atmosphere. And just see how the blossoming lotuses are attracting bees and birds by their aroma. The humming and chirping of the bees and birds is echoing throughout the beautiful trees in the forest. Also, here the sands are clean and soft. Therefore, this must be considered the best place for our sporting pastimes. Purport. The description of Vrindavan forest as given herewith was spoken by Krishna 5,000 years ago and the same condition prevailed during the time of the Vaishnava Acharyas there three or four hundred years ago. Kujat koki lahang sesara sagana kirne mayura kule Vrindavan forest is always filled with the chirping and cooing of birds like cuckoos, kokila, ducks, hangsa, and cranes, sarasa. And it is also full of peacocks, mayurakule. The same sounds and atmosphere still prevail in the area where our Krishna Balaram temple is situated. Everyone who visits this temple is pleased to hear the chirping of the birds as described here. Kuja, koki, lahang, sasarasa. Have you ever heard the cuckoo chirp? He has a very wonderful, he goes, oh, 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 oh. He keeps going on and on until you just are wondering what's going to happen. Then he stops. <laughs> and then he starts right from the beginning. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sometimes Krishna would imitate that sound to send a signal to Radharani in the house. And one day, uh, Radharani was in the house, and uh, Jyotila and Kokila, the mother in law and daughter in law, were there watching and making sure that she wouldn't go anywhere, couldn't go anywhere. And Krishna, from a distance, he started this, oh, 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 and he's so perfect 
that he can speak in the, in the language of all birds or any animal or any language of any human also. He speaks everything. So it sounded just, so all of a sudden, all the cuckoos in that area started doing the same thing. You know? And all the divine came out and they said, what's going on here? And then, uh, and then the mother-in-law said, go find out what's happening. She sent Radharani to go find out what's happening. These cuckoos are not ordinary cuckoos. Kujat koki lahang sasada sa. Text six. I think we should take our lunch here. Since we are already hungry, because the time is very late. Here the calves may drink water and go, sl and sl go slowly here and there and eat the grass. Text 7. Accepting Lord Krishna's proposal, the cowherd boys allowed the calves to drink water from the river and then tied them to trees where there was green tender grass. Then the boys opened their baskets of food and began eating with Krishna in great transcendental pleasure. See, if you go to the spiritual world, you can eat with Krishna. Text 8. Like the horal of a lotus flower, surrounded by its petals and leaves, Krishna sat in the center, encircled by lines of his friends, who all looked very beautiful. Every one of them was trying to look forward toward Krishna, thinking that Krishna might look toward him. In this way, they all enjoyed their lunch in the forest. But Krishna is not any ordinary person. He can make it by his potency such that every one of the boys will think that Krishna is just looking at him. Purport. To a pure devotee, Krishna is always visible, as stated in the Brahma Sangita. Santak sadaiva ridaye shubilo kayanti. And as indicated by Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, sarvatak pani padam tat sarvato chi chido mukam. If by accumulating pious activities, krita punya punja, <coughs> one is raised to the platform of pure devotional service. Krishna is always visible in the core of one's heart. One who has attained such perfection is all beautiful in transcendental bliss. The present Krishna consciousness movement is an attempt to keep Krishna in the center. For if this is done, all activities will automatically become beautiful and blissful. Among the cowherd boys, some place their lunch on flowers, some on leaves, fruits, or bunches of leaves, some actually in their baskets, some on the bark of trees, and some on rocks. This is what the children imagined to be their plates as they ate their lunch. Text 10. All the cowherd boys enjoyed their lunch with Krishna, showing one another the different tastes of the different varieties of preparations they had brought from home. Tasting one another's preparations, they began to laugh and make one another laugh. Purport. Sometimes one friend would say, Krishna, just see how my food is relishable. And Krishna would take some and laugh. Similarly, Balaram, Sudama, and other friends would taste one another's food and laugh. In this way, the friends very jubilantly began to eat their respective preparations brought from home. 
text 11. Krishna is yagya book. That is, he eats only offerings of yagya. But to exhibit his childhood pastimes, he now sat with his flute tucked between his waist and his tight cloth on his right side and with his horn bugle and cow driving stick on his left, holding in his hand a very nice preparation of yogurt and rice with pieces of suitable fruit between his fingers. He sat like the horl of a lotus flower, looking for, toward, forward toward all his friends, personally joking with them, and creating jubilant laughter among them as he ate. At that time, the denizens of heaven were watching, struck with wonder at how the personality of Godhead who only eats in yagya, was now eating with his friends in the forest. Purport. When Krishna was eating with his cowherd boyfriends, a certain bumblebee came there to take part in the eating. Thus Krishna joked, Why have you come to disturb my brahmana friend, Madhu Mangal? You want to kill a brahmana? This is not good. All the boys would laugh and enjoy speaking such joking words while eating. Thus the inhabitants of the higher planets were astonished at how the Supreme Personality of Godhead who eats only when Yagya is offered is now, was now eating like an ordinary child with his friends in the forest. Text 12 O oh, Maharaj Pariksit, while the cowherd boys who knew nothing within the core of their hearts but Krishna were thus engaged in eating their lunch in the forest, the calves went far away, deep into the forest, being allured by green grass. Text 13 When Krishna saw that his friends and cowherd boys were frightened. He, the fierce controller of even fear itself, said, just to mitigate their fear, my dear friends, do not stop eating. I shall bring your calves back to this spot by personally going after them myself. So Krishna, we, we talk a lot about how we need to be the servant of Krishna. But we don't realize sometimes that Krishna is the supreme servant. Krishna is the servant of all of his devotees. This is what we're all looking for. Purport. In the presence of Krishna's friendship, a devotee cannot have any fear. Krishna is the supreme controller. I'll repeat that again, unless there's objections. From the, any objections? No. Objections. Objection? No? You sure? Positive? Mm -hmm. Okay. In the presence of Krishna's friendship, a devotee cannot have any fear. What does that mean? In the presence of Krishna's friendship, first of all, you have to be Krishna's friend. To have no fear. To be someone's friend, you have to get to know them. You don't be a friend with somebody you don't know anything about. That's what friendship means, actually. In the presence of Krishna's friendship, a devotee cannot have any fear. Krishna is the supreme controller, the controller of even death which is supposed to be the ultimate fear in this material world. Bayam tutiya binibesha taksyat Srimad Bhagavatam 11.237 This fear arises because of lack of Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, there cannot be any fear. For one who has taken shelter 
of the lotus feet of Krishna. This material world of fear becomes hardly dangerous at all. Bhavam buddhir vatsa padam 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 yat vipadam natecham Bhavam buddhi the material ocean of fear becomes very easy to cross by the mercy of the Supreme Controller. This material world in which there is fear and danger at every step padam padam vi padam is not meant for those who have taken shelter at Krishna's lotus feet. Such persons are delivered from this fearful world. Samashita ye padapalava plavam mahatpadam punya yasho murarehe bhavam budir vatsa padam 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 yad pibadam natejam the beautiful Sanskrit Bhagavatam 10, 14, 58 Everyone therefore should take shelter of the Supreme Person who is the source of fear, fearlessness and thus be secure. Which in, in, interestingly enough, this verse, this last verse which is quoted in the purport is one of the prayers that Brahma makes in the next chapter when what happens, happens, which we'll hear now. Another outstanding feature of this chapter is that this was the last chapter that Srila Prabhupada translated and commented upon personally. And I was with Jai Dwaita Maharaj, who is his chief editor, English editor, and uh, Jai Dwaita Maharaj, there, there's videos of this actually when Prabhupada was on his disappearance bed, you might have seen it, and Jai Dwechmarj would hold the dictaphone to Prabhupada's mouth. Prabhupada was in a state that any ordinary person could not speak, would not be conscious because of the pain. And Prabhupada co uh, dictated these purports in that condition. He couldn't move, he was nothing but skin and bone, he couldn't move at all. He had to be helped just to move anything. And he dictated these purports that you're going to hear. And Jaidway Tamarish, I was staying in the room with Jaidway Tamarish when this went, was going on. And he said, these purports, they didn't need any editing practically at all. Meaning English, Ed, Prabhupada wanted them to be edited into perfect English. We witnessed this with our own eyes, this miracle. And then the devotees he empowered finished the last part of the 10th canto and the 11th and 12th canto and it is ecstatic to anybody with an open heart and an open mind. Let me go and search for the calves, Krishna said. Don't disturb your enjoyment. Then, carrying his yogurt and rice in his hand, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, immediately went out to search for the calves of his friends. To please his friends, he began searching in all the mountains, mountain caves, bushes, and narrow passages. So Krishna knows everything. He knows exactly what was happening. But to act like an ordinary human being for the pleasure of his devotees, he acts like this, just for the pleasure of his devotees. And of course, to teach Brahma a lesson, which we'll hear about later on. Purport. <clears throat> the Vedas, Shrita Shritara Upanishad 6.8, assert that the Supreme Personality of Godhead has nothing to do personally. Natasya Karyam. For what is the personality Godhead? Check it out. <laughs> Siri just went into ecstasy. 
she heard the word Krishna and she freaked out. <laughs> Isn't it? Okay, Siri, it's all right. <laughs> She's got a mind of her own. The Vedas, Shrita Shrutara Upanishad 6 8, assert that the Supreme Personality of Godhead has nothing to do personally. Natasya Karyam Karanam Chavidyate, because he is doing everything through his different energies and potencies. Parasya Shaktir Vividaiva Shuyate. Nonetheless, here we see that he took personal care to find the calves of his friends. This was Krishna's causeless mercy. Maya Jakshina Prakriti Suyate Sachada Chalam Bhagavad Gita 9.10 all the affairs of the entire world and the entire cosmic manifestation are working under his direction through his different energies. Still, when there is a need to take care of his friends, he does this personally. Krishna assured his friends, don't be afraid. I am going personally to search for your calves. This was Krishna's causeless mercy. 15. O Maharaj Prikshit, <clears throat> Brahma, who resides in the higher planetary system in the sky, had observed the activities of the most powerful Krishna in killing and delivering Agasura. And he was astonished. Now that same Brahma wanted to show some of his own power and see the power of Krishna who was engaged in his childhood pastimes. Playing as if with ordinary cowherd boys. Therefore in Krishna's absence Brahma took all the boys and calves to another place. Thus he became entangled. For in the near future, very near future, he would see how powerful Krishna was. Purport When Agasura was being killed by Krishna, who was accompanied by his associates, Brahma was astonished. But when he saw that Krishna was very much enjoying his pastimes of lunch, he was even more astonished and wanted to test whether Krishna was actually there. Thus he became entangled in Krishna's maya. So the, way that, the reason this, the way this happened was when Krishna killed Agasura, there was a great celebration all over the universe because this Agasura was a very big demon. He was causing disturbance all over the universe <coughs> by his mystic powers. So therefore everyone was celebrating. And it, the celebration, the noise of the celebration, the sound of the celebration came to Lord Brahma. And everyone asked him, what is this about? And Brahma said, I don't know. I, you know, Krishna bewildered him actually, he didn't know. I'll have to go myself and find out. <coughs> so he heard during this process of going that, that Krishna, his Lord and Master, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, was having his pastimes on the earth. And he came and this is what he saw. Krishna wandering around with a piece of, you know, yogurt and rice in his hands, with, you know, fruit coming between them, looking for the calves, you know, looking, or being with the Calvary boys. When Nagasura was being killed by Krishna, who was accompanied by his associates, Brahma was <laughs> astonished. But when he saw that Krishna was very much enjoying his pastimes of lunch, he was even more astonished and wanted to test whether Krishna was actually there. Thus he became entangled in Krishna's maya. After all, Brahma was born materially, as mentioned here. Ambojanmajani 
He was born of Amboja, a lotus flower. It does not matter that he was born of a lotus and not of any man, animal, or material father. A lotus is also material, and anyone born through the material energy must be subject to the four material deficiencies. Brahma, the tendency to commit mistakes. Pramada, the tendency to be illusioned. Vipralipsa, the tendency to cheat. And Karanapadva, imperfect senses. Thus Brahma also became entangled. Brahma, with his maya, wanted to test whether Krishna was actually present. These cowherd boys were but expansions of Krishna's personal self, ananda chin maya rasa, pratibhavita abhi. Later Krishna would show Brahma how he expands himself into everything as his personal pleasure. Ananda chin maya rasa, ladini shakti asmat, Krishna has a transcendental potency called Ladini Shakti. He does not enjoy anything that is a product of the material energy. Brahma, therefore, would see Lord Krishna expand his energy. Brahma wanted, wanted to take away Krishna's associates, but instead he took away some other boys and calves. Ravana wanted to take away Sita, but that was impossible and instead he took away a Maya Sita. Similarly, Brahma took away Mayar Bhaka, boys manifested by Krishna's Maya. Brahma could show some extraordinary opulence to the Mayar Abhaka, but he could not show any extraordinary potency to Krishna's associates. That, that he would see in the very near future. Mayarbhakasya Ishitu. This bewilderment, this Maya, was caused by the Supreme Controller, Prabhavata, the all potent Supreme Person, Krishna. And we shall see the result. Anyone materially born is subject to bewilderment. This pastime is therefore called Brahma Vimohana Lila the pastime of bewildering Brahma. Mohitam nabhijanati ma me vyak paramavyayam Bhagavad Gita 7.13 Materially born persons cannot fully understand Krishna. Even the demigods cannot understand him. Muyanti yat suryaha Tene Brahma rida ya adi kavaye Bhagavatam 111. Everyone from Brahma down to the small insect must take lessons from Krishna. Text 16. Thereafter, when Krishna was unable to find the calves, he returned to the bank of the river. But there he was also unable to see the cowherd boys. Thus he began to search for both the calves and the boys, as if he could not understand what had happened. Purport. Krishna could immediately understand that Brahma had taken away both the calves and the boys, but as an innocent child, he searched here and there so that Brahma could not understand Krishna's maya. This was all a dramatic performance. A player knows everything, but still he plays on the stage in such a way that others do not understand him. Text 17 When Krishna was unable to find the calves and their caretakers, the cowherd boys anywhere in the forest, he could suddenly understand that this was the work of Lord Brahma. Purport <clears throat> Although Krishna is Vishwavit, the knower of everything, happening in the entire cosmic manifestation, as an innocent child, he showed ignorance of Brahma's actions, although he could immediately understand that these were the doings of Brahma. 
This pastime is called Brahma Bimohana, the bewilderment of Brahma. Brahma was already bewildered by Krishna's activities as an innocent child, and now he would be further bewildered. Text 18. Thereafter, just to create pleasure, both for Brahma and for the mothers of the calves and cowherd boys, Krishna, the creator of the entire cosmic manifestation, expanded himself as calves and boys. Purport. Although Brahma was already entangled in bewilderment, <clears throat> he wanted to show his power to the cowherd boys. But after he took away the boys and their calves and returned to his abode, Krishna created further astonishment for Brahma and for the mothers of the boys by establishing the lunch pastimes in the forest again and replacing all the calves and boys just as they had appeared before. According to the Vedas, Ekam Pahu Syam, the personality of Godhead can become many, million, many millions upon millions of calves and cowherd boys, as he did to bewilder Brahma more and more. So try to understand what's happening. You know, the ordinary cowherd boys and calves are not Krishna himself personally, but they're expansions of his energy. But now what Krishna is doing is he is expanding himself. He has become all those calves and boys personally. Those calves and boys were non-different from him. And he's going to take all of them back into the forest, from the forest, back to the villages. And they're going to interact with their mothers and family. And the next morning they're going to come back out into the forest. Krishna is doing this. Himself. It, that's Krishna doing that. And he's going to do it for one full year going back and forth from the forest out to the forest back from the forest out to the forest and during that time the mothers and fathers of both the cowherd boys and the calves means the cows and the bulls are going to increase their love for their children unlimitedly to the point where it's exactly the same as their love for Krishna. Because when Brahma t stepped aside for just a few seconds, the time of Brahma and our time is such that a year went by. I don't know about you, but that's pretty amazing. In the beginning of this chapter, it said that only pure devotees and advanced devotees can actually understand this and become not just astonished, but ecstatic because they think it's just a myth. They, this is not possible. This can't, these kinds of things can't happen, so therefore it must be a myth. A story they made up just to give us an idea of the potency of God. Translation By his Vasudev feature, Krishna simultaneously expanded himself into the exact number of missing cowherd boys and calves with their exact bodily features, their particular types of hands, legs, and other limbs, their sticks, bugles, flutes, their lunch bags, their particular types of dress and ornaments placed in various ways, their names, ages, and forms, and their special activities and characteristics. By expanding himself in this way, beautiful Krishna proved the statement, Samagra Jagad Vishnu Mayam, Lord Vishnu is all-pervading. Purport. As stated in the Brahma Samhita, 533, Advaita Machutta Manadim 
अनंत रूपम आद्यम पुराण पुरुषम नवयौवनम च कृष्ण परम ब्रह्म the supreme personality of godhead is adyam the beginning of everything he is adi purusham the ever youthful original person he can expand himself in more forms than one can imagine yet he does not fall down from his original form as krishna therefore he is called achuta This is the supreme personality of Godhead, Sarvam Vishnu Bhayam Jagat, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. Krishna thus proved that he is everything, and that he can become everything, but that still he is personally different from everything. Matstani Sarvabhutani Nacaham Te Shravastitaha. This is Krishna who is understood by a chintya bedha beda tatva philosophy purnasya purnam adaya purnam eva vishishate Krishna is always complete and although he can create millions of universes all of them full in all opulences he remains as opulent as ever without any change advaitam this is explained by different vaishnava acharyas through philosophy such as vishuddha advaita vishishta advaita and dvaita advaita therefore one must learn about krishna from the acharyas acharya van purusho veda one who follows the path of the acharyas knows things as they are such a person can know krishna as he is at least to some extent and as soon as one understands krishna janma karma chame divyam evam yo veti tatvataha one is liberated from material bondage tektva de ham punar janma naiti mam iti surjuna text 20 now expanding himself so as to appear as all the calves and cowherd boys all of them were as all of them as they were and at the same time appear as their leader krishna entered rajabhumi the land of his father nanda maharaj just as he usually did while enjoying their company purport krishna usually stayed in the forest and pasturing ground taking care of the calves and cows with his associates the cowherd boys now that the original group had been taken away by brahma krishna himself assumed the forms of every member of the group without anyone's knowledge even the knowledge of baladev and continued and continued the usual program so why wasn't baladev there baladev always goes out with krishna in the forest it was baladev's birthday and his mother kept him back cuz she wanted to do something special with him He was ordering his friends to do this and that and he was controlling the calves and going into the forest to search for them and when they went to stray allured by new grass but these calves and boys were he himself This was Krishna's inconceivable potency as explained by Srila Surup Damodar Goswami <coughs> Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritir Ladini Shakti Rasma Radha and Krishna are the same. Krishna by expanding his pleasure potency becomes Radha Rani. The same pleasure potency, Ananda Chinmayarasa, was expanded by Krishna when he himself 
became all the calves and boys and enjoyed transcendental bliss in Brajabhumi. This was done by the Yoga Maya potency and was inconceivable to persons under the potency of Maha Maya. 21. O Maharaj Brikshit, Krishna, who had divided himself as different calves and also as different cowherd boys, entered different cow sheds as the calves and then different homes as the different boys. Purport. Krishna had many, many friends of whom Tridhamma, Sudama, and Subal were prominent. Thus Krishna himself became Sridhamma, Sudama, and Subal and entered their respective houses with their respective calves. 22. The mothers, of the, the mothers of the boys, upon hearing the sounds of the flutes and bugles being played by their sons, immediately arose, rose from their household tasks, lifted their boys onto their laps, embraced them with both arms, and began to feed them with their breast milk, which flowed forth because of extreme love specifically for Krishna. An affection. Actually, Krishna is everything, but at the same time, expressing extreme love and affection, they took special pleasure in feeding Krishna, the Parabrahman, and Krishna drank the milk from his respective mothers as if it were a nectarian beverage. Purport. Although all the elderly gopis knew that Krishna was the son of Maharaj Yashoda, Mother Yashoda, they still desired, if Krishna had become my son, I would have also taken care of him like Mother Yashoda. This was their inner ambition. Now, in order to please them, Krishna personally took the role of their sons and fulfilled their desire. They enhanced their special love for Krishna by embracing him and feeding him and Krishna tasted their breast milk just to be like nectarian beverage. While thus bewildering Brahma, he enjoyed the special transcendental pleasure created by Yoga Maya between all the other mothers and himself. 23. Thereafter, O Maharaj Prikshit, as required, according to the scheduled round of his pastimes, Krishna returned in the evening, entered the house of each of the cowherd boys, and engaged exactly like the former boys, thus enlivening their mothers with transcendental pleasure. The mothers took care of the boys by massaging them with oil, bathing them, smearing their bodies with sandalwood pulp, decorating them with ornaments, chanting protective mantras, decorating their bodies with tilak, and giving them food. In this way, the mothers served Krishna personally. But bear in mind, he's five years old. He killed Agasura when he was five years old. Huge, snake-like demon. But I can become God by performing some yoga exercises. No, I don't think so. God's always God. He doesn't have to perform any exercises. He doesn't have to do any meditation. He doesn't have to do any austerities. Krishna is God all the time, even when he appears like a five-year-old child. Full potency. So just like he's taking the mother's of the cow, cow, calves, the cowherd boys, and, and the mother, and the cows, the, the mothers of the ca calves, are taking Krishna's taking their milk like nectar, but when Putana came, when he was only just still in the crib, not even walking, she put poison on her breast and wanted to kill him. And he said, "Okay," so he took the breast, took her milk and took her life air right out of her breast. That's Krishna. Thereafter, all the cows 
entered their different sheds and began mooing loudly, calling for their respective calves. When the calves arrived, the mothers began licking the calves' bodies again and again and profusely feeding them with, their, with the milk flowing from their milk bags. Purport. All the dealings between the calves and their respective mothers taking care of them were enacted by Krishna himself. 25. Previously from their very beginning, previously from the very beginning, the gopis had motherly affection for Krishna. Indeed, their affection for Krishna exceeded even their affection for their own sons. In displaying their affection, they had thus distinguished between Krishna and their sons. But now that distinction disappeared. Purport. The distinction between one's own son and another's son is not unnatural. Many elderly women have motherly affection for the sons of others. They observe distinctions, however, between those other sons and their own. But now the elderly gopis could not distinguish between their own sons and Krishna. For since their own sons had been taken by Brahma, Krishna had expanded as their sons. Therefore their extra affection for their sons, who were now Krishna himself, was due to bewilderment, resembling that of Brahma. Previously, the mothers of Sridhamma, Sudama, Subal, and, and Krishna's other friends did not have the same affection for one another's sons. But now the gopis treated all the boys as their own. Chukadev Goswami therefore wanted to explain this increment of infection in terms of Krishna's bewilderment of Brahma, the gopis, the cows, and everyone else. And with that, we'll stop our reading for tonight. Hare Krishna. Brahma Moham Lila Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. So now we come to our very nice part of our program where we um, have an open mic session. Anything that you just heard that stuck into your mind that you want to share in terms of reflection or uh, further discussion? or question, please feel free. Yes, me, my pundit. They don't call him pundit for nothing. <laughs> <coughs> there are so many, so many points in that. Um, I have three main questions. Um, well, I'll ask just one of them, and then if I get a chance <coughs> later on, perhaps I can ask another one. I Saying think you should give us the answers. <laughs> Krishna, uh, Brahma s steals the cars and the boys. Krishna fulfills all of those roles. So. My question, it's a kind of comment and a question. When, when everybody goes back to Braj and the, everything goes on and the parents of the cowherd boys and the mothers of the calves, they all get this ecstatic exchange. And then the next day they all go back out into the pasturing ground. This goes on for a whole year, 365 days. So, <clears throat> and I think in a, in a way it, it was kind of answered later on, but why, why does Krishna maintain that whole arrangement when there's nobody there to see it? Because when he's, when he's back in the village, from a material perspective, we can see a reason why he maintains that when he comes back into the forest, there ostensibly isn't anybody to witness that. So, 
and then then I was I was thinking I, I could and then you were saying about how this takes place under Ladini Shakti so is Krishna doing that just purely for his own pleasure when, when he's doing it both for his own pleasure and to teach Brahma a lesson Brahma is not ordinary person. Brahma is uh, guna avatar of Krishna. <coughs> he's 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 not Krishna. He's a normally he's a jiva, so an expansion of a, a expansion of a part of Krishna, yeah. like the rest of us. But he's empowered by Krishna to do something that only Krishna can do. Therefore, he's called uh, guna avatar. He's more than a shaktivesh avatar, actually. And uh, therefore, Krishna is doing all of this just to wind Brahma up as much as he possibly can, <laughs> because the whole thing is being enacted in order to tell, teach Brahma a lesson. But it's also because Krishna, he's not like an ordinary person when he manages one thing, when he does one thing, he does so many things at the same time, every time, every moment, every movement he does is for everyone and everything's pleasure and at the same time he's enjoying himself yeah. that's Leela like a little boy before he goes to school like three years old four years old they don't really have anything that they have to do I mean sometimes the mother says come over here I'm gonna bathe you or go over there and I have to eat this and that but in general during the day they just do what they want to do they, but they but they want to do something. It's not that you sit there, you know. The kid, you know, boy, little boys, they want to go around. They want to see everything. They want to play with everything. If they have friends, they want to engage their friends and take roles and play kings and cops and robbers and whatever they play, hide and so seek and everything. That's Leela. That's the principle of Leela. You're, you're yeah. doing just because you want to do it. There doesn't have to be another reason for Krishna to do anything. So he doesn't have to do all of this in order to build, build a Brahma, but he, he really likes it. This is his Leela. He really gets a charge out of this. This is, what he, this is the way he wants to do it. Therefore, Jiva Goswami said, it was mentioned in one of the purports, that unless one can actually wrap his mind around the fact that Krishna is a chintya. And what that means is not just philosophical concept, it means that Krishna can do anything he wants. There's no limitations. And once one gets that concept and actually assimilates it to the point where everything that he hears is actually the same as Krishna doing it, the holy name of Krishna is Krishna. We just that's why we read this prayer, you know, in the beginning. I read this prayer from Sanatana Goswami and it says I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. So in the broadest sense, he does all these things to please everyone in the universe who is willing to hear and enjoy with him. But still, we have human intelligence, so we like to try to figure things out, so we <laughs> can do this in relish. <laughs> you were going to say something. It just the, the, the Quick, Shamagori, she's the sage of all sages over here. She's not just she's not just a cook. Just listen to this. As, uh, as far as uh, I understand, uh, from the second day, Balaram was also there. So he was also going out on the day, he was kept back. 
So Krishna had to maintain everything going on. Even brilliant. Balara, just brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. That's, that's the answer. Yeah, because Balaram didn't find out. Yes. yes. In order to keep it from him so that he could keep up the ruse. Yeah. yeah. And eventually Balaram susses brilliant. it out, but he doesn't really. Brilliant. You should write a commentary. <laughs> Shama Gray, that was brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was the answer. Put succinctly. True. Essential truth spoken concisely is true eloquence. Yes, Vicky. Um, Shoot. What, um, I don't really understand why Brahma took the boys and the calves in the first place. What? Yes, because Brahma had heard that his Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, was in Brajabhumi having his pastimes. And when he came there and he saw Krishna as a little boy with, a, with fruit in his hand and a, you know, yogurt and rice in his hand, he became bewildered because Brahma is attached to power and opulence and he conceives of Krishna to be the supremely opulent. So when he saw Krishna in that form doing that, in the forest with his coward boyfriends, he said, and in the, in the key was in the, in the purport itself, he wanted to test if Krishna was really there. He wanted to test whether Krishna was really there. Krishna was obviously there, I mean, he was right in front of him, but he wanted to test whether Krishna was really there, whether this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And rather than immediately bow down to him, which the next chapter, the whole next chapter is his prayers begging forgiveness and acknowledging all the wonderful qualities that Krishna's have and these are some of the, the most beautiful prayers in the whole Bhagavatam that's why is it possible you explain you can use the word Leela yes Leela means pastime Leela means pastime when we come into the material world, we're forced. And when we do the things we're, we, have, we do, we're forced. Sometimes we don't like to do it, but we do it anyway. When we come into the material world, we, we actually have a desire to try to be like Krishna. To control, to own, to enjoy the energy that doesn't really belong to us and the energy that is constantly changing with time. So even if we enjoy something for a whole lifetime, which is not very, you know, that's rare, where you'll find somebody you can be with your whole life, or a situation that you can be in your whole life that you can enjoy for a whole lifetime, that's hard. I mean, do you, do you know of anyone that that happens to? I don't. I've never heard of it. So therefore, we're forced. We get something, we're attached to it. It's my Mac. Yeah. And then take it away. But when we actually realize that this is Krishna's, when we actually realize, not just philosoph, not just an idea, but we actually perceive it for ourselves, really, then we're no longer uh, with something material. But every one of us who comes into the material world, including Lord Brahma, is controlled by the material energy, which we heard in one of the purports, Maya Dyakshina Prakriti, Suyate Sachida Chita. Krishna is uh, the controller of the material world through his energies. He doesn't do anything. That's his Leela. He is in, always in Leela. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't even have anything to do with the creation of the material world. That's 
you know, an expansion of an expansion of an extension of, of Lord Baladev, his assistant, that has something to do with the creation of the material world. That's Leela. That's why, if we are in the right consciousness, when we hear, we are transported. We are purified and we are transported. We can feel things that we can't feel in any other way by hearing Krishna's pastimes in the association of other devotees. It is the, the way of purification of the heart and it is the way to awaken our uh, love for Krishna and our attachment for Krishna. When we are actually realize who Krishna is, we cannot let him go for a second. Even when he plays tricks on us, like sometimes in very special circumstances, like when, you know, Radharani became proud, right, in the Rasa dance, all the gopis in her were dancing with Krishna, and Krishna was expanding himself to dance with all the gopis. And Radharani got a little proud, and Krishna just, poof, he disappeared. And they're all, they were mad. You, you've heard the, the term head over heels. I mean, if he was get taken away all of a sudden like that, what would you do? Yeah, yeah. Someone has a life partner or, or someone that they're really in love with, you know, and they're taken away all of a sudden, especially untimely, they go mad sometimes. So the, the coward, they went mad. And Krishna sees, he's behind watching. And then they start to talk about him. And they start to play like they're him, doing pastimes with them. And he's in such ecstasy, he can, he can barely, you know, maintain his own consciousness. And this is all done as Leela to increase the, 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 love, the level of their love to the point where it's already beyond our conception. And it just keeps on expanding without stop forever. That's Leela. And their forms never change. Krishna comes to the material world and he acts like a baby. He shrinks himself down into a baby form just to please Devaki, his mother. Because she was afraid. He appeared from her womb, outside of her body, just like, like that. Full, full form, form, forearm, fully decorated with jewels and mo most opulent form with, you know, tiara and so many things, Kostuba jewel and everything. And she said, because Kansa had killed all of, her all of her children, six of them, before. And out of motherly affection, even though he appeared right before, he said, just to, just to give her the confidence, don't worry, nothing's going to happen to you or to me, because this is Vishnu. And she knew it. But then she said, could you just please, if Kansa sees you, he'll, he'll try to kill you of pure motherly affection which is mixed with her knowledge that he's God she says please hide yourself now become like an ordinary baby <laughs> and he did and then he told Vasudev to take him over to over across the river the Yamuna to Yashoda who had just had you know Krishna and a female baby Yoga Maya Mahamaya, actually. <clears throat> I mean, it's a deep, deep spiritual science that once you start to use that inquisitiveness to want to find out more and more and more and more and more, and as you're purified by hearing it, and your intelligence becomes capable of accommodating it, and finally when you develop full faith, and when you hear you can actually hear Krishna's pastimes 
and accept them for what they are, you live in the spiritual world. You're no longer in the material world. And all the little things that bother you, they no longer bother you. That's the process of becoming fully Krishna conscious. And all by chanting Hare Krishna and hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. What's not to like? Huh? The food's good as well. <laughs> that's the that's the secret weapon. <laughs> that's the secret weapon. Well, maybe it's not so secret, but secret in a sense. And the proof is that when we actually sit down and hear, even if everybody's not hearing on the same plane, at the same level, at the same. It, the atmosphere changes. What's the difference? I don't know about you, but I can perceive a change in the atmosphere big time from when we first started till now. It's pro you know, the evidence is there. It's a matter of how we're evaluating the evidence and how we're coming to the conclusion. something from cyberspace. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have something from cyberspace. <laughs> Radha Ramana is going to... There's two questions. One from Yadutama Prabhu. Yadutama. And one from Mother Rati Manjari. So. Hare Krishna Yadutama. So this is the question from Yadutama Prabhu. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. It's so nice to get to watch your broadcast live. In the last purport we read, I found the notion of Krishna bewildering everyone. Brahma and the Brajbas is very intriguing insofar as that Krishna is keeping us all bewildered for different emotional intentions. Whether it be us in our day-to-day -day material lives or to deepen the rasa between him and the Brajbas, we are all being bewildered by the Lord to a certain extent. Is this Leela meant to highlight this aspect of Krishna? Well, it's, it is Krishna's Leela, the, the creation of the material world, but it's not the same as Krishna's Leela in Braj or Krishna's Leela when he comes to the material world. Our bewilderment by Mahamaya is not the same as Krishna's bewildering the Brajbasis in Yogamaya. Because the Mahamaya causes us to forget Krishna altogether. But yoga maya causes us to be bewildered to forget that Krishna is God, but we're still with him. So he, he his yoga maya is it's his Mahamaya, which is an expansion of Yogamaya, is causing us to become bewildered by the material energy and think that we are material, to think that we are a material body and a material mind, that we belong to a certain earth place on the earth, that we have a certain identity that has nothing to do with our original identity. But the Brajbasis, they are in their original identity. They're not bewildered. They're bewildered to forget Krishna simply so that they can have spontaneous love with Krishna. And if we think that we can get that while we're still bewildered by the material energy and thinking that we're a material body, and if we think that we can enjoy with Krishna and that Krishna wants to enjoy this, <laughs> <laughs> which is filled with unmentionable things, then you have another thing coming. <laughs> so that is a misconception that you just expressed that you should correct. My duty, don't mind. 
Next. Mother Rati Manjari said, Dear Guru Maharaj, please... Hare Krishna Rati. She was just with us in Houston. Please accept my respectful obeisances. I have a question about something I did not understand. Perhaps it's beyond my understanding anyway, but I will try to ask anyway. Tonight we heard that even though Lord Brahma tried to steal Krishna's calves and cow her friends, he could not actually touch the Lord's eternal associates. He took away some ordinary calves and boys, like forms of Maya, as I understood it. Yet we also heard that Krishna expanded himself personally into his cowherd boys and friends. So if Brahma did not take away the actual boys and calves, then where did the actual associates go? They are uh, kept by Krishna in another place. Just like Sita, when Sita was taken by Ravana, he, see, Ravana can't touch Sita's body. It's not possible. So when he took Sita's body, before he touched her, she transformed herself into a material form and she went to another place. So Brahma thought that he was taking the coward boys to another place, but he was taking forms that are not the coward boys to another place. And the real coward boys went to another place. And we don't know where that other place is, by the way. At least I haven't... It's maybe somewhere in the Puranas, but I haven't read it. Yes, you have the answer. I, I, I'm always going to call her wherever she's, she's just scratching her head, and I thought, we're going to get the answer from Shamagori. <laughs> <laughs> then what happened then when Sita came back everybody was questioning she went to another man's house and stayed there all that time how can she be pure so as Leela Ramachandra said alright put her into the fire and if she comes out of the fire whole, and the, then you can understand she's, she was, she's still pure. She stayed chaste. But what it really meant was that the other Maya, the, 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 the Maya Sita was burned and the real body of Sita came out of the fire. Yes, Radha Raman. Um, Maharaj, I have a question uh, based on the earlier purports of the chapter mm. where Srila Prabhupada was explaining how an advanced devotee can't give up hearing about Krishna in any circumstance. Mm. Um, with a clear implication, perhaps, that less advanced devotees may do, do. so. Mm -hmm. So how does the less advanced devotee make that transformation? The process By hearing regularly. And to the extent that it's steady, to that extent one enters. And when it, the steadiness becomes fixed, then one is enabled to hear more of the time of the day than before. And finally one can just hear and chant. That's Paramahamsa stage. Mm. Interesting because Arjuna was a warrior and he was being asked by Krishna to fight a war. So when he got enlightened by Krishna and he became fully Krishna conscious, he didn't become a sage and go to the forest and just sit down and hear and chant about Krishna all day. He went and he fought because that's what Krishna wanted. And that way he was even better than a Paramahamsa. Of course he was, <laughs> he had Krishna right next to him the whole time, so he couldn't forget Krishna for a second. So that's the proof, that's the proof of the pudding, that he's param better than a Paramahamsa. He's an eternal associate.
Is that okay? No, I don't know what I was thinking. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <coughs> I've heard that um, the followers or the devotees in the Brahma Madhva Sampradaya they disregard or ignore the Brahma Vimohana Leela because Lord Brahma is the head of their Sampradaya and they, you know, they don't want to see the head of their Sampradaya as being bewildered but he's also the head of our Sampradaya but within the Brahm, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya but yet we relish hearing this pastime um, could you comment on well Lord Chaitanya when he traveled to South India he revealed that not all the Madhva Sampradaya were actually following Madhvacharya strictly. So just because you're in the Madhva Sampradaya, uh, you may not be following strictly. That's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is that before Madhavan Ripuri entered that Sampradaya, they would worship Krishna alone without Radharani. And there were aspects of Krishna's pastimes that they could not enter. And that's one of them. But it is there in Sridhar Swami's commentary and we accept, based on the authority of Lord Chaitanya, we accept the text that Sridhar Swami commented on as the text of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which includes the Brahma Mohan Leela. So it means that you have to have qualification to understand, to accept and understand the Brahma Mohamalila without thinking that it's an offense to your, to your spiritual master. It's hardly an offense. It's most, one of the most confidential leelas in the Bhagavatam. Increases the glories of Brahma. And the prayers that we're going to read next chapter are clear as a bell. Just like sometimes Sanatana Goswami comments in the Brihat Bhagavatamrita that sometimes even a, a, an advanced devotee that's on the bhava or prema stage will act in a way that isn't correct just purposefully so that other people will understand what not to do as a service to them. But when, we, when they do that, then Krishna arranges special circumstances so that they never forget. Again, these are not conceivable by uh, neophytes. And on top of all of that, when we say, the, I've heard, <laughs> I immediately question, from whom? Because there's a lot of things to hear, from, hear about, a lot of things out there now. And uh, I think the safe thing is not to hear those things. The safe thing is to hear, you know, Srila Prabhupada's purports and Srila Prabhupada's translations of uh, the, the version of Bhagavatam that is accepted by everyone. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yes, Radharaman. Did somehow the Brahma become more per somehow more perfect as Haridas Thakur because uh, in the second pastime that's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, not the one with the prostitute but the one with Maya Devi herself Maya Devi makes this comment that everybody I bewildered before, even Lord Brahma, only you have I not been able to bewilder yeah, that's exactly right uh, you, you get Krishna Prem from Lord Chaitanya. 
Jagai and Madai were Jai and Vijay. They took birth. After those three births, they became eligible, and therefore they came as Jagai and Madai to get Krishna Prem. That's one example. And sometimes they just come to to participate in the pastime. I don't think it would be right to say that one's higher than the other, in a sense. It's different. It's not that Lord Brahma stopped being Lord Brahma. By the way, the word Brahma is a post. There's different personalities who take that post. And then there's there's another verse that says that, you know, he's all Lord Chaitanya accepted him as a an incarnation of Prahlad Maharaj. So sometimes there's a predominating soul who is uh, taking that position, and the mood of another one of the eternal associates. Uh, becomes manifest. And the moods of personalities on that level are the same as the pers a person. And the highest aspect of that is a form. The, the gopis, the intimate associates of Radharani, they are actually extensions of her form, meaning they are her moods which take forms and in, in that way Krishna can enjoy uh, unlimitedly. So, you know, depending on who we are and what our spiritual attainment is, then we appreciate these things. And as we appreciate them, as our doubts are removed, and we kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together, <laughs> then gradually uh, the, pi the picture becomes clear, like you're putting a jigsaw puzzle together and you got the box over here. If you don't have the box over here to you know, to show what the picture is going to be, it's like, it's harder to put together the, <laughs> the puzzle. So we get the picture, the whole picture, and we're still trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. But because we know what the whole picture is from our acharyas, then it's easier for us to stay in the game, to keep putting the puzzles, pictures, pictures, pieces of the puzzle together until we actually come to the point of uh, full realization. And then you can't stop thinking of Krishna. Say, even the gopis tried to stop thinking of Krishna, but they couldn't. They didn't really try to stop thinking of him, but that was part of their expression of the depth of their separation. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Hare Krishna. It's after 8 o'clock. Thank you very much, everyone, for your participation. And uh, we hope you enjoyed hearing about Krishna today. And we hope that you go on hearing about Krishna and every day without fail. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Brahma Mohan Lila ki jai. The Lord Brahma ki jai. Go Premanandi. We'll see you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, same station, same place, same time, uh, UK, 6 o'clock time. Hare Krishna. Thank you. <laughs>